We will build an image classifier, a neural network that takes an image as an input and tells us what it sees. The Cypher 10 dataset contains 60,000 images labeled with 10 different categories and that's what we will train our model on. We will implement a convolutional neural network with TensorFlow. TensorFlow is an open source machine learning library developed by Google. It is used both for research and production at Google, offering a flexible and intuitive framework for building and training deep learning models. I will run this on Google Colab, a Jupyter notebook environment hosted by Google, which also offers GPUs to train your neural networks on. To enable GPU support, you click this arrow here, change runtime type and select T4. If you want to pay for more powerful GPUs, you can also select the V100 or the A100. To install all the necessary dependencies for this project, I run pip install tensorflow numpy matplotlib. First, I add all the necessary imports at the top of the notebook, so I don't need to scroll around much during the video. The images we'll work with have a size of 32 by 32 pixels. Each pixel consists of three values, one for red, one for green, and one for blue, each ranging from 0 to 255. To ensure our model learns efficiently, we aim to have normalized values though, ranging from minus 1 to 1. So we will also add a bit of pre-processing. But first we need to download the dataset. Fortunately, it is a very common dataset to train on, so there are helper methods available for downloading it. We use dataset Cypher 10 load data to download the dataset. It provides us with all the images and associated labels for training and testing our model. To normalize the data, we divide everything by 127.5 to get values between 0 and 2, and then subtract 1 to have values between minus 1 and 1. I also define all the classes in the dataset for later use. Let's briefly examine the dataset. Our training set has 50,000 images and there are 10,000 images in the test set. Each image is of size 32 by 32 by 3. Three color values for 32 by 32 pixels. I use matplotlib to display the first 10 images of the training set here. We transform the pixel values of our images to be between minus 1 and 1, but matplotlib requires them to be between 0 and 1 again. So we denormalizing the image here before showing it. I also print out the assigned label class names for each image. Okay, there's a frog, two trucks, a deer, two cars, a bird, a horse, a ship and a cat. Our convolutional neural network takes a 32 by 32 pixel image with three features per pixel as input, one feature for each color. We apply a convolution layer with a kernel size of 3 to the image to extract 64 features. Convolution with a kernel size of 3 means we take 9 values from the image and multiply them with some learned weights to get a new output feature. We do this for every possible position of this 3x3 three three window on the image giving us a 30x30 30 30 matrix of feature values. If we want to have 64 output features, we use 64 of these kernels, each with their own learned weights and repeat this process 64 times. Of course, behind the scenes, this is done in parallel for all positions of each kernel. Next, we use a max pooling layer with a kernel size of 2 and a stride of 2. This means we take every 2x2 two two window of the resulting feature map and take the max value for each feature and communicate it giving us a new feature map of 15 by 15 with 64 features. We feed this into a new convolution layer which takes in 64 features and outputs 128 features and let the size of our output be halved again by a max pooling layer. We now end up with a 6 by 6 feature map with 128 features. Now we need a brain to turn these features into a probability of what is seen in the image. We flatten the feature map and feed it into a fully connected linear layer which has 4608 input neurons and 120 output neurons. We add another fully connected linear layer with 120 input and 84 output neurons and one last layer with 84 input and 10 output neurons. One output for each label class in our dataset. 
This fully connected neural network will then make sense of things. All outputs from the convolution layers and fully connected layers, except the last one, are fed into a relo activation function to add some non-linearity. The last output is fed into a softmax function to turn the output into a probability of which class of object is seen on the image. I use the sequential class to define our model. This class sequentially feeds the input through the defined layers to generate the output. The input to our network is an image of size 32 by 32 with three colors. This is passed to a convolution layer which outputs 64 features using 3x3 three three kernels and applies a relo activation function. This feature map is then fed into a max pooling layer with a kernel size of 2 and a stride of 2, halving the size of our feature map. We repeat this process for the second convolution step, ending up with a 6x6 feature map with 128 features. We then flatten this to a vector of size 4608 and pass it through three fully connected layers, reducing it down to an output vector of length 10, one element for each class in our dataset. All layers but the last one use the relu activation function, while the last one uses softmax to turn the output logits into probabilities. Using summary, we can see how a given input is transformed through the network. As expected, the first convolution outputs a 30 by 30 feature map with 64 features, which is then halved to a 15 by 15 feature map with 64 features, and so on until we end up with a vector of length 10. Now it's time to train our model. If you want to know more about training a model and loss functions, please watch this video here as I describe it there in more detail. Before we can train our model, we need to compile it. Here we set the optimizer, Adam, which is one of the implementations of backpropagation. We also set our loss function. We track accuracy during training, which is simply the number of correct predictions divided by the total number of images in the training set. Now we can simply call the fit method with our training images, the associated labels and let it run for 10 epochs, which means 10 full run-throughs over all 50,000 images. Let's train our model. Because this training will take some time, I will speed up the process here so you don't have to sit through it with me. Done. Let's see how we're doing and try some images. This function takes the image and the probabilities output by the model. We use matplotlib to display the image and the probabilities side by side. First, we denormalize the image and show it. Next, we draw a bar chart of all the probabilities for each class. We are retrieving one image from our test set and inputting it into our model. Then we let our model make a prediction and obtain the probabilities. Next we can easily pass the image and the probabilities to our view classification function. Here's what it looks like. This is supposed to be a cat. This is clearly a ship, another ship and a plane. Now let's evaluate the whole test set. To evaluate our model, we simply call the evaluate method with all test images and test labels and receive the total loss and accuracy back. 71% accuracy. This is significantly better than just random chance, but to get a CNN like this to perform even better, we would need additional convolution layers and implement some other tricks to prevent overfitting. If you're still curious and want to know, for example, how a model like ChatGPT works, this video here will tell you all about it. Until then, have a lot of fun coders.